Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Well, it's that time. I'm going to go ahead and start this latest series here of videos based on your suggestions. Thank you as always. Please keep them coming. I'm going to continue to do the videos throughout the week and then probably into early to mid next week as well. So be on the lookout for future videos to come out here. And with your suggestions, I'm going to go ahead and start this one here with a particular monster I guess you could call it um, not necessarily a cryptid but more like a monster because this particular entity whatever he was he has been suggested multiple multiple times before I just never really got around to him because one look at him at the beginning I thought he was kinda hokey like the way he looked was more like something out of an Austin Powers movie but looking at him now into in terms of more research I was able to see that there are some interesting tales associated with this particular monster so thought I would share with you here he's a well-known uh, particular entity well-known name even if you haven't uh, heard of the details associated with him at least the name definitely comes to mind he's probably considered a quote-unquote all-star when it comes to the world of cryptids and monsters and who I'm talking about here is the entity known as the spring-heeled jack or some people call him jack or he's actually been called the devil himself it all depends on who is telling the story at the time there but for the sake of this video I'm gonna call him the spring-heeled jack because that is the moniker that is most associated with him lots of stuff to talk about so I'm gonna condense some of it here um, if you ever wanted to see or read more information on him there's plenty of examples to use from but for the sake of time I'm just gonna talk about a few examples some of his most noteworthy stuff here so that way it's a good way like a good synopsis of sorts to showcase to everybody um, here for this video now the Spring Hill Jack who is he you'll see a picture of him here and again, the basis that I was talking about earlier about being a long-lost Austin Powers villain is not far off considering how he looks like. But what made me change my mind is that later on, later iterations of the Spring Hill Jack, which I'll talk about here in a few minutes, um, had him metamorph to something else, um, more of a true devil-like appearance, rather than somebody just raiding, let's say, the vault of a used Halloween store and finding some of the most ridiculous things to put on rather some of the other stories truly paint him as a really terrifying figure which saved me from again not fully discarding talking about the spring Hill Jack so so who is he um, well you're looking at a picture of him here this is probably the most common base description associated with the spring Hill Jack um, and I'll talk about him in a few minutes here the details of how he looked. First, let's go off with um, the time period that's tied into his appearance. He's been known for quite a long time. I mean, you would have to go back multiple, multiple decades to see uh, when he first started. By all accounts, the very first instance, very first appearance that he had is back in 1837. So, good whiles back, almost 200 years or so back, and this was in London. That's what also made uh, the Spring Hill Jack be such a big phenomenon at the time, was because whatever was happening, this was happening in the apex city of the world at that time, which was London. Um, other places, other cryptids, other monsters, uh, they usually happen out in the middle of nowhere. No, not this guy. Whoever this entity was, um, he was somebody that attacked everybody right there in what would be considered the New York City of today. So his very first sighting again was in London back in 1837, and this has been described as the very first instance. It all started like this. There was a businessman who was returning home one night. He had just apparently got off of work, and he was just walking as he probably was every night, walking back from work straight to his home, when all of a sudden he saw something that was completely unsettling. He saw somebody or something, a mysterious figure of sorts, leaping in the background of a cemetery. And apparently at that time, he, the way he walked home, um, his path crossed the cemetery. And he noted that whatever this thing was, it was leaping 
towards, uh, let's say, some tombstones, leaping across them, leaping over them, and most importantly, leaping straight towards him. And then before he knew it, with, I guess, one gigantic leap, it landed right next to him, right in his path, right in his direct path. In other words, 100% on purpose, like those scary nightmares that you and I probably all had before where you see somebody or something in the far background and then before you know it it's right in front of your face this instance was the same thing on there now what's interesting to note is that there was no attack this is probably the only time apparently that Jack uh, whoever the Spring Hill Jack was did not attack anybody but it's interesting to note the reason for this is because this was a man all of the other attacks that the Spring Hill Jack had been cited as having done they have been towards young women and women themselves so this in this case this was a man and he did not attack him at all no attackers reported but this was the first instance where the description of how the spring hill jack looked like was uh, whoever this business one described him as follows he described him as being a muscular man with quote unquote devilish features including large pointed ears, a large protruding nose, and then most importantly, some glowing eyes. And then that was it. The uh, monster, whatever it was, leaped away, and that was the first known instance. Again, no attack of any kind. Now, the second known instance was later in that same period, um, in October to be exact, there was a girl whose name was Mary Stevens, she was a servant who was also walking home at that night. She was, uh, I guess, finishing up with her job, and she too was walking uh, home. It looks like she was trying to visit her parents. And what had happened was, very same scenarios with that other businessman. Here she was passing by a particular place when all of a sudden a strange figure leapt at her, this time not coming from a cemetery, but from a dark alley just next to her. Wham! Just like that. A figure came out of nowhere, landed straight to her, and this time, he did attack Mary Stevens. In fact, it's been described as he took a hold of her with his strong arms, his strong hands. He took a hold of her and actually began to, for lack of a better word, to try to rape her. Because he would try to kiss her, he tried to rip her clothes, and his, um, what the way he was ripping the clothes off was was has been described as him having claws the way she saw it i guess in the brief glimpses that she could both in the dead of night and then with the action happening so fast she saw that he like he had some claws that were that looked and felt as cold and clammy as those of a corpse um and luckily mary stevens had the mind to scream as much as she could and when that happened, she quickly brought um, a commotion and other residents who were nearby uh, who had not heard of the attack now were hearing it. And so they ran over, and then that's when the Spring Hill Jack fled at that point. And he fled by his most common attribute, which is he leaped. He, he not just, I mean, we're not talking about him, like, you know, just running and jumping, but think of it like somebody with with the power of like let's say a grasshopper apparently somebody that can just leap right over people directly not a running start not anything involving a contraption of some sort it's just him literally leaping uh, at least nine feet plus as has been described and then escaping in that manner picture this i, mean, I would imagine it's something like in the movies like uh, the Nightcrawler uh, from the X-Men movies the way he was able to run and jump and then leap just out of the blue or leap over people leap onto walls imagine that with the Spring Hill Jack and you probably have a good idea of how he worked of how his actions were and then um, the next official uh, instance that occurred with the Spring Hill Jack was a little bit afterward the next year 1838 this was the very first time that apparently there had been so many reports, not really confirmed reports, but reports nonetheless, that uh, there was commotion and pandem, uh, let's say some kind of panic associated with that town, with the London area. So much so that the mayor of London himself, a guy by the name of Sir John Cohen, held a public session. Think of it like one of those town hall meetings of sorts 
where if something is a big issue and uh, the only way to fully quell this issue is to have a town hall, well, that's what happened here. And in this particular town hall, he was able to produce multiple, multiple letters from people, each of them describing uh, what their experiences were, and apparently other people there, too, that were in that town hall were able to mention um, what happened to them. And the interesting thing to note with that is that considering that these people in most cases probably didn't know each other and in most cases um, had never met each other before, here they were telling very similar tales, all describing again a man that looked just like the Spring Hill Jack, just like the picture you're seeing of here, and yet these are all different people that again have never met before, probably never spoke to each other, and yet they were all telling the same similar tales. And they all told about the stories of him especially attacking several young women. That seems to be, again, his mantra. He was almost like a serial killer of sorts, except uh, from what I can tell, there were descriptions of people being killed by him, but not necessarily from his actions directly. It's more his indirect actions, meaning um, people were so scared of him, especially the women, that sometimes they would die of fright at that point. So, um, as as it was explained, another in, in the information I looked up, it said, quote unquote, another correspondent claimed that in Stockswell, Brixton, Camberwall and Vaxhall, apparently those are all towns of some sort, several people had died of fright and others had fits. So again, not directly tied to the Spring Hill Jack, but instead indirectly tied to him from these people having so much panic in their hearts that it completely took them over. Um, another instance that occurred had to do with a report that was later on that year, um, April 14th, 1838. Um, this was a notable report because there was a gardener in Sussex who described an unknown creature that resembled um, the stories and so far the descriptions and most importantly the actions of the Spring Hill Jack. This is notable because by that point Sussex was a much farther area out there than in London. And so when that happened, um, you, you, uh, people realized that whatever was happening was no longer contained in one single area. Instead, it was spread out to a much, much larger area, too. Um, at this point, too, the Lord Mayor, who, uh, the gentleman that I was talking about earlier, Sir John Cohen, he, he kind of took a half-hearted, half-concerned approach to the Spring Hill Jack. He himself thought that there's a good chance that some of this is pure pandemonium, some of this is pure hysterics. Um, people just using their imagination to let things run wild when something could instead have a more plausible explanation. And then he also took the approach that, hey, there could be really somebody causing this harm and this damage to the women, especially out there. So um, he went to the basis that anything involving these reports, anything involving these attacks, they would find out who he was and attempt to hunt him down nonetheless. Now let's talk about some of the more well-known cases. Um, in this case, there's two of them that stand out, and both of them are because these um, essentially describe the most well-information-related description of the Spring Hill Jack and how he acted. The one case is called the Alsup case, and it has to do with a woman by the name of Miss Jane Alsup, and this is what happened. The next year, on February 19th, uh, she said that there was a knock on her door. Um, she was there at her house. Um, it was her father's house, in fact. And when she opened the door, there was a man who was dressed as a police officer. And seeing something recognizable like this, um, she instantly, uh, you know, there was no fret. There was no... Uh, fright, anything associated with any kind of panic because, again, if you open the door and you see a police officer there, uh, you know that this is somebody that's there to protect you. You have that instinct that he's there to cause no harm. Um, the police officer told her, uh, kind of like in a quick manner, told her to please bring a light because we have quote-unquote caught the Spring Hill Jack here in the lane that's presumably right outside her house. So she brought a candle, probably towards, probably to try to assist the police officer in any way possible. 
and as uh, she was bringing the candle and the pol police officer took her to that dark area whatever that lane was near her house she saw there was a man uh, that was huddled there who had some kind of large cloak over him and um, as they drew closer and the candle was bringing uh, whatever it was that was huddled there uh, closer into illumination that's when suddenly whatever this thing was whatever the entity was threw off the cloak and quote unquote presented a most hideous and frightful appearance straight to her vomiting blue and white flame from his mouth while his eyes resembled red balls of fire she saw all of this in that split moment and it turns out that the police officer wasn't going to do anything because the police officer was a fake he was in on it now apparently him and the spring killed jack were working together uh, whoever this man was that was pretending to be a police officer he was helping the spring hill jack try to bring victims to him and then in an instant when uh, miss alsop saw uh, the flames and the red balls of fire she also noted that he had a large helmet and his clothing was very skin tight it resembled something called white oil skin imagine like um i guess anything involving uh, like the superhero costumes that you see now in the in the movies, how they're skin tight and they have a leathery, oily slick to them. Imagine something like that, but a more frightful appearance, and that's probably as close that we get to the Spring Hill Jack and how he looked like. So the Spring Hill Jack, at that same moment, again began attacking this woman, just like he had with other women out there. He was tearing off her clothes, tearing off her. Uh, garments whatever she had as much as possible she too noted that he was wearing some claws but this time instead of the claws looking and feeling of some kind of corpse he they were made of some kind of metallic substance and she actually while screaming for help managed to get away um, so impressively enough even with this spring hill jack um, having her in his grip and then this fake police officer probably in the winds too making sure that she could not escape well she did she managed to get away and she kept, she ran as quick as she could to the house but no sooner did she get to the steps of the house than the spring hill jack jumped right in front of her and then uh, this is probably the most severe attack yet um, tore her neck and her arms with his own claws how he tore it, I don't know. I don't know if he grasped her neck and then just yanked back. Or maybe if he took those claws and swiped them in a vertical or horizontal manner on her neck. Like as like if you would as a knife would. But even crescently enough, she survived even that attack yet. Because by that point, with the commotion that was happening, one of the sisters that was in the house there, um, she came running out. She saw what was happening. And uh, for whatever reason, the Spring Hill Jack and the fake police officer left as well. And then the second most known case has to do with a... Oh, actually, fast forward a little bit. Because what had happened was, by that point, the Spring Hill Jack, this was more like the climax, the apex of his appearances. Um, this was one of the most well-known cases, too, because by that point, the newspaper, whatever forget what the name of that newspaper was called but I think it was called like the penny penny anti penny dreadful something like that um, it began circulating these tales and at that mass at that point it, it reached kind of like a sort of mass effect but even after that tales of the Spring Hill Jack slowly died off uh, people while they were still talking about the attacks here and there um, inevitably, the um, attacks themselves slowly dwindled off. It was at this point, though, that his appearance began to take the more devilish type looks. Um, like what you and I would associate with a common uh, description of, let's say, the devil or a demon. That's what he would look like. In fact, uh, the clothing that he would wear would now be reported as being actual, like, fur or actual skin rather than clothing itself and then the clothing like the cape that he had or the cloak that he had in the back was now being described as being wings themselves like unfurled wings like you would imagine again anything involving the devil himself um, but again the report slowly died down and 
Um, the only uh, by the 70s, by the 1870s, they were down to just a handful, if even then. But the mo- one of the most noteworthy ones was probably the last one that occurred in the 1800s. This was in August 1877, and this was when uh, the Spring Hill Jack actually, for the first time, it seemed, attacked a man. But not in a way that he was attacking the women, But uh, and you'll see what I mean here. Uh, you had to go to a boot camp of sorts, a place called a North Camp. And again, this was in the dead of night. There was a sentry there that was on duty that night, just guarding the area, making sure that there was no tomfoolery around. And as he was making his rounds, he suddenly noticed that there was a quote-unquote peculiar figure coming to him from across the road. And not only was this figure just coming to him, there was no way that um, that you could tell otherwise because of all the other places that this mysterious figure was going. It was going straight to that sentry. But the way it was moving, it was making a loud metallic noise. Now imagine how unsettling that would be. There you are in the dead of night. And you're just trying to make sure that you're doing your job right. You're a guard. You're just making sure that things are looking okay. And then you notice this figure in the far background slowly and then quickly getting closer and closer to you. Not only that, but it's making a peculiar metallic noise. And this guard, though, the sentry, he was smart enough, though, to not have whatever this was get close enough to him because after it was at a certain distance the uh, sentry issued a challenge Uh, probably something on the lines of halt right there or I will take some action against you something along those lines and at that point the Spring Hill Jack immediately vanished like he disappeared not vanished like out of thin air but probably just moved into a dark area where he could no longer be seen or his silhouette or whatever was seen could no longer be seen as well and so the soldier after waiting a few moments uh, realized okay so this guy whatever this thing was it's gone let me go ahead and be more cautious and let me make sure that I can keep track of other you know other stuff happening let me go back to my duties he turned back and the figure the Spring Hill Jack once he turned around was right there in front of him how creepy is that to have this thing just completely disappear in the far distance no noise thereafter you turn around and then he's standing right there in front of you and this is where the attack is different from the men for this guy in particular than the women rather than trying to rip his clothes off and rather than trying to uh, rape him in this instance instead the figure whatever this spring hill jack was delivered several slaps to the guy's face hard slaps like we're talking like insulting slaps of some sort and the soldier said the sentry said that the way that his um, hands felt they felt as cold as that of a corpse and so by this point um, maybe the sentry was making some loud noises but there was some commotion and some other people there in that boot camp of of sorts came over and once again the Spring Hill Jack Noticing that he was um, about to be discovered or maybe cornered, completely leapt over all of the guards. Again, you know, think of Nightcrawler from the X-Men movies, just completely leapt over him and then disappeared into the night. And that was the last known, more uh, attributable, attributable, serious incident uh, because there are some other ones that happened later on, but it's been vague as to whether people think uh, those instances were the Spring Hill Jack or not. In fact, I'll talk about briefly about one of them here. Uh, you can go straight to the late 1900s. In fact, um, you'll know uh, there's a story that occurred in 1953, so not too late. Again maybe more towards the middle, and it happened here in Texas. There was a lady by the name of Miss Hilda Walker, and another lady by the name of Judy Myers, and then a gentleman by the name of Howard Phillips. Again, all of this happening in 1953. They were in their apartment building, and they sighted something or some man or whatever it was on a pecan tree nearby their apartment. And the way they described it was, whatever this thing was, had a black cape, skin-tight pants, and quarter-length boots. And they had, he had very, very tight-fitting 
clothes, either gray or blackish type clothes. Um, and another instance was uh, you can go all the way straight to 1997, so not too far out. This happened um, uh, somewhere in Welsh. And there was an encounter with a Spring Hill Jack-like entity. Um, this man that was traveling um, in that area, he was a salesman of some sort. He said that as he was traveling, um, I don't know if it was either by car or if he was just walking, but um, whatever happened, the, a man of some sort immediately just leaped out of nowhere, passed him by the road, actually leaped into his area right next to the salesman, and slapped his cheek once hard, and then leaped back, uh, leaped away, uh, if, and then either went too fast for the eye to see or disappeared before anybody could realize what happened. But that's the latest story, the last one, 1997, that has been cited as happening in Welsh by this traveling salesman. Now, who or what the Spring Hill Jack was, boy, it's, it's, there's a lot of theories out there. The most common, realistic theories about who the Spring Hill Jack was, was that he was really just an average man, um, somebody that was taking advantage of all the hysterics, all the pandemonium, everything tied to the panic that one normally sees whenever something takes a life of its own, and um, all it was was either one man or a set of men who took advantage of that and were preying on women and using Again, the idea that something fantastical as the myth of the Spring Hill Jack was real, using that to their advantage. And I had mentioned earlier that that's what the mayor of that town of London was thinking as well. That there was some man, not some supernatural entity, not some paranormal entity, not something from hell that was doing this, but rather just either a man or some men taking advantage of it. And I can kind of see this angle because when one thinks about it, you don't have to be a supernatural entity to be able to leap over people. I mean, just look at those people, um, their YouTube videos of them, the ones that leap across buildings, that leap down from buildings, they land usually like on garbage uh, those large garbage dumpsters and then they leap over another fence um, I forget what the term is called but there's some people that that's a sport for them They're, that's the actual sport itself is them being able to do those f fantastic leaps um, and again I forget what it's called but if you've ever seen the, Mon the Punisher Warzone film um, then you'll know that some of the villains there were able to do so between the buildings and that's what I'm referring to so if you take that idea and you tie it into the Spring Hill Jack then there's a good chance that here you have again the realism that it was just a man or some men that were well trained that were able to do um, gymnastics in a extreme form like that and they were used that to their advantage and all you would need really is imagine you know, some candles t uh, underneath a cloak, some lit candles with some gas, and then you could have the idea that somebody could spew fire or somebody that had fiery eyes, that kind of stuff. There are others, though, that say, no, the Spring Hill Jack truly is supernatural, truly is paranormal. It's some kind of, of lost entity from hell, some kind of demon, some kind of um, entity, again, straight from down there. Could even be the devil himself. Um, there are some that goes with the angle. And yet there are others who state that the Spring Hill Jack is, in fact, um, instead an alien of some sort. Somebody that was here from another planet, from another dimension, maybe, that was here... Um, and was and was interacting with humans but if so why would they do that in a manner that was say tied to the usual manners associated with like let's say a lunatic like somebody who's who's a serial killer of sorts it, it just seems too convenient if an alien would come down why would they start acting like somebody like Jack the Ripper or some other type of serial killer status, somebody that would try to cause harm specifically to women. Um, again, um, that's why I don't believe that particular angle. I'm again more of the idea, just like with the mayor, that all it was was some men and maybe even just one man that were taking advantage of the hysterics and they were men that were able to do really, really good gymnastics. They had 
um, the you know the the uh, notion of theatrics behind them that they could create more illusion with just little effects and just think of it like you know like the Batman movies when you have somebody that's dressed in a giant cape with dark fitting clothings um, and you see something like that in the dead of night then it creates that illusion for you so the Spring Hill Jack what do you guys think um, have I'm sure you have heard of this particular monster before it's again one of the all-stars when it comes to the world of cryptids and monsters lots more instances to talk about but again going now into what 30 minutes into this particular video uh, there's just far too much coverage to particularly um, site here so if you want to see or hear anything else including other potential origins tied to the Spring Hill Jack um, you'll find that information out there just Google it look on anything commonly tied to the topics of the Spring Hill Jack and other cryptids and monsters and you'll see all the info there so alright everybody thanks again as always take care